It's your routine Saturday afternoon in Morgantown, West Virginia. Just another Saturday here for the beloved Mountaineers. But folks in these parts are saying this is the biggest college football game we've ever hosted. ABC Sports College Football in association with the College Football Association presents a Big East matchup featuring the University of Miami Hurricanes and West Virginia University. Donnie Neelan, the coach of the unbeaten and untied Mountaineers, they and Miami are at the top of the Big East standings with an amazing performance by Boston College so far in South Bend, Indiana. And next week, it'll be these Mountaineers in BC. Who knows what's gonna happen? Good afternoon, welcome everybody. With Dick Vermeil, I'm Brent Musburger. A lot of snaps between now and the end of the season. So let's start here with West Virginia. When you came in, Dick, what kind of a team did you find? Well, first off, we all know they're undefeated, but there are reasons for that. Extremely well coached, okay? And they're very tough. Consistently play up to their ability, score over 40 points a game, play good defense, and Coach Nalen says, best special teams he's ever coached. What else do you need? You know, we opened the season with the Hurricanes in Boston College. They've changed quarterbacks yeah. since then. What about this Miami team? Well, they're a lot better team right now, and not just because Ryan Collins has taken over the quarterback job. Yes, he does add a dimension of mobility that the other fellow didn't have, but I'll tell you, their offensive line is blocking better now. They run the ball much better, and their down four defensively is the best in the country. Hold on to your seats. We're about ready to taxi. Oh, yes, one other thing you want to know, the weather. Folks, it is not. Miami hurricane weather. So why aren't we playing this game in Miami? Coming up now, it's the Canes and the Mountaineers on ABC. And number 25. Not a seat to be had here today at Mountaineer Field. At any time the Canes come a visiting, it's a big game. Head coach Dennis Erickson and the Miami Hurricanes are about to pour onto this field after winning the coin toss. They have deferred. Jack Aroot, this is a wonderful setting here for a big game. Well, Brent, consider these facts. For the University of Miami Hurricanes since 1985, they have played top 10 nationally ranked opponents over 30 times. So it may be a big game, but they're not at all intimidating. In fact, intimidation is not a factor. According to middle linebacker, according to linebacker, Rohan Marley, a sophomore. He says it doesn't matter what house they play in. We never intimidated. Never. I don't think there's one guy on that football team that gets intimidated by coming in. Everywhere we go, it's our house. Here, it's our house. We just are home away from home. We never intimidated. Conversely, for the West Virginia Mountaineers, they say this is the biggest game ever in the 102 years of football. They say it's even bigger than the 89 Fiesta Bowl game against Notre Dame. They are emotionally higher than kites. And Coach Dick Vermeil, you know that can be a plus or a minus, depending on what you do with it after the kickoff. No question, and as long as they control it to, and point it for positive play early in the ball game, gradually they'll settle down. So Don Nealon's Mountaineers up against Dennis Erickson's Hurricanes and the Mountaineers will handle the ball first. Two very talented freshman return men. They have been a story here for West Virginia. Mike Logan and Rasan Vanderpool back deep. Two outstanding kickoff return people. Number three kickoff return team in the country averaging 27 yards a return. Two very gifted young athletes. Scott Barnwell, number 39, to put it on the tee. Underway in Morgantown. And Logan runs up. At the 20. Still going, there's a penalty flag down. Picks up a block as he cuts back. But there is a penalty flag. Logan, 45, and finally out of bounds. <laughs> 
We were talking about it, what gifted athletes they have returning kickoffs. It's all bottled up over there, but they don't wrap the arms, see? They try to grab and strip them. They don't get their shoulder pads into them. Don't wrap him up tightly. Now you take off, and you have a Mike Logan, just a sophomore out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania, turning on the speed. And it is a legal return. 42 yards on a spectacular return. And it will be West Virginia with the ball at the Hurricanes 41 yard line. Al Kelchner on the Mountaineers, their first play of the game. Fires complete to Hill at the 35 yard line and Paul White defending. So it is Jake Kelchner who transferred to West Virginia from Notre Dame. He is the leading quarterback in the nation right now. Gain of six, second and four. Second and four off that six yard gain here. And that's what the Mountaineers wanted to accomplish with first down. Did not want to be left in second and long against this great defense. Now it is Walker, Robert Walker blasting to the 30. And a first down, West Virginia. Walker with wonderful speed. When he gets the corner turned, he's a dangerous runner. Rich Bram, a tackle that Dick has liked all season long, especially that straight ahead, that blast blocking. Warren Sapp, he's a tremendous defensive line in the middle. Brian and Patrick, they are the sack artists. Rohan Marley, there was a rumor sweeping Morgantown. In fact, an article that he wouldn't play. He's here. Dexter Siegler, the ringleader. Kelchner again getting time and now piled on by Kenny Lopez, 71. Well, he wanted to throw downfield. He couldn't go downfield. He looked for his alternate receiver, Brent. Couldn't find him by that time. Two defensive tackles. I think both Lopez, 71, and Warren Sapp, two outstanding pass rushers. They came into the ball game with 38 sacks, averaging over four games. Really good defensive front. Dick, how good is that defensive line? Now, Barnwell, the kickoff man, bruised a shoulder over there, receiving some treatment on the uh, on the sideline. You can see there asking him where it hurts there with his Second right down. side. See, there isn't a weakness in there down for Brent. You have to account for all four of those guys. You just can't single up on, uh, double up on one guy. 16-yard loss for the sack. They run the fullback to the 41-yard line, Jimmy Freeman. Well, Mike Jacobs, the offensive coordinator, said they wanted to come out and establish the run to try to slow down that pass rush. And they wanted to do it with counteraction, draw action, some double team blocking, and some nakeds. The quarterback keeping the ball out by himself. Third and 22. No, sir. Right side incomplete. Wanted Mike Baker. Rich Bram, the big offensive left tackle, number 75, in the middle of your screen on Kevin Patrick, 86. He's getting a little help right there because they're sprint out blocking. See, he has an awfully good jam, but I'll tell you this, you have to jam Kevin Patrick more than once. Sauerbrunn, Todd Sauerbrunn punting. Jonathan Harris, who's replaced the injured Jamie German here today. Sauerbrunn, a superb punter. Bounces inside the 10. This one's going to be down at the 3. Todd Sauerbrunn. Whenever Miami changes quarterbacks, it's big news. When they change in the middle of the season, it's a headline event. Ryan Collins a month ago out of Pembroke Pines, Florida, has taken over. Gives him a little bit better running dimension. But do not underestimate his long arm. A very talented deep thrower. Number eight, a sophomore at control. Donnell Bennett is his lone running back. Bennett, right side, stopped at the four by Wes Richardson, the leading tackler of the Mountaineers. You'll see a lot of one back with the Canes. They came into the season thinking they would use two, but Larry Jones will come out alone sometimes. Always talented wide receivers with a great deal of speed. Casey Jones 
He is the center on a very talented offensive line. Tim Brown, great athlete defensively for West Virginia. And the man who calls the signals in that secondary is David Mayfield, number 30. Now second and seven. Fake the delay, roll to the left. And Collins will keep it out of bounds, but short of the first down. The shocker, Boston College, leading Notre Dame 24 to 14. Dickett is now third and inches here for the Hurricanes. Well, with Ryan Collins, it, you can anticipate a quarterback sneak. That's not a, a guarantee, but with that kind of a quarterback, a little quick jump into the gap. Casey Jones, the center. They fumble, fumble! They took the loss. Collins went back on the ball and pounced on it. Collins recovers the fumble. But it forces Miami to punt. They were fortunate to get that back. You'll see that the ball extended out there in front of Casey Jones's hand. He's going to get that defensive people move back up. The ball bounces out of his hands. Never did get it seated in his hands properly. Most of the time, Brent, when that happens, the quarterback pulls his hands out early. Mike Chrissy punting. And Mike Baker against the savage rush to Baker on the first hop. Baker slips through to the 39. Donnie Nealon's emphasis on the special teams is still paying a dividend. This game in the early going being played in Miami's into the field. West Virginia had a first and 10 at the 29. Then they lost 16 yards on a sack. This is their second series and they will begin it in hurricane territory again at the 39 yard line. Kelchner the quarterback Robert Walker the lone running back Walker left side gain of about three before Robert Bass brings him down John. Kelchner right side almost oh. intercepted that was white Paul white broke in front of the receiver nothing but green carpet in front of him boy he, <laughs> he's disappointed look at he's excited Brandy. he actually should have picked that when he had one pass interception coming into the game and six in his career look at him strut look at him hey, oh. <laughs> they practiced that dance for about 15 minutes on the um, field here yesterday they practiced it <laughs> you know, West Virginia has been using their fullback as a tight end opposite the other tight end Brent it, that doesn't allow the defensive team to substitute personnel against a two tight end formation. We saw Darren Studstill on the sideline. Did a good job of quarterbacking this team last week. Could see action here today. Kelchner firing complete to Mike Baker at the 26 yard line. First down Mountaineers. You'll see that the West Virginia is moving the pocket just slightly not always going to be straight down the middle so the defense see he's going to come out and set up here and then throw back that breaks the pattern of the setup for the quarterback breaks the definition of the pass rush see he has a nice little pocket to throw in there comes Baker right there from the backside Vanterpool the freshman slotted to the right instead it's the fullback Freeman to the 22 yard line they're going to run up inside with a fullback on quick action just enough to try to keep Robert Bass the fine middle linebacker at home. You'll see the quarterback will sprint right. He's going to hand it off back. See, and they're going to try to strip the ball out of there. See, they like to do that. Everybody does a good job of that in college football now. Bass, the middle linebacker, making the stop. Second down. They are talented on the defensive side. Walker hole in the middle. Walker to the 17 and Rohan Marley. Marley is quite a story. Undersized linebacker does a great job of delivering the hit deck. See they ran a tackle trap here coming back to the inside. Now watch this as he pulls. See here he comes. He's going to come back a crap and he's going to trap Lopez number 71. Nice job of executing a trap block. And a crisp tackle, wasn't it, by Rohan? You know, Miami kids all tackle real well, Brent. They're good athletes. They run through the contact. They wrap the arms for the most part. Good tackling team. Third now and one. Kelsner's going to throw for it. Now sprinting out of trouble. Throwing back. 
incomplete in the end zone. A dangerous throw back to the middle of the field, and it was that pressure up front. Now that leaves West Virginia in a field goal situation in the early going. Uh, Dick, you want to second guess the third down call? Yes, I do, Brett. <laughs> I thought you might. Well, first off, they're not a real good field goal kicking team. They have problems. They have two different field goal kickers, one from 30 yards out in and one from 30 yards out, and they're not real good. I, I really believe they made a mistake. They should have gone ahead and tried to make that first down. They were running the ball pretty effectively. That tackle trap you showed us was great. This is Tom Mazzone, 35-yarder. No good, and oh, would they love to have third down back. We all do that as coaches. Believe me, I've done it. Everybody has done it. But uh, when you're moving the ball and you don't have real good field goal kickers, I always think you're better off trying to get after that first down. Boston, Holly. Now what are the writers going to do? Oh, did I ask you? <laughs> now, Nebraska's number one coach, if they ask me. And if you're a Hurricane fan, you're thinking business as usual. Another big game and another great performance by the defense so far. Now the offense needs to stand up. Collins out of the shotgun has been shaky. Hits Bennett over here on the right flat. And Bennett is slammed out of bounds. Second down for the Canes and James Stewart, who hit a big run against Rutgers last week. A talented young running back out of Vero Beach, Florida. Checks in. Gets into the action on a cutback. Fumble! And West Virginia pounces on it. Wes Richardson. Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, changed up the defense that time and went from a four-down lineman to a three-down lineman, thinking he can handle the, uh, the cutbacks better. And you'll see the nose guard right here. He's going to be double. That's Hawkins, number 99. And he fights back off that block right there. There's a hat put right on the football by Derek Wiley, 45, the outside backer. He put his hat on it and knocked it out. Good changeup of defense on that series right there, Brett. Erickson's defense under pressure again. They would be wise to go for a big one on first down, Brent. It's Walker sweeping to the right. You called it. Bass comes up. It's second and long now for the Mountaineer offense. These people run so well, Miami does. It's hard just to take the ball and directly run outside them. Normally, you want to use a little counteraction to freeze those inside people or bring the quarterback out on bootlegs, and that's probably eliminated today because of Kelsner's hamstring problem. Dick, the Mountaineer coaches have to be thinking about stud still. No, Kelsner's a very fine, talented quarterback, but they may need a little more mobility at that position to put some pressure on this talented defense. Let's see what happens here. Kelsner going to hand it to Walker. There's nothing going here, folks. Forget about it. 25-yard line, and Francis again. See, they flop Corin Francis to the strong side of the formation toward the tight end because Marley is only 5'8", 205, so he goes to the strong side, and he, he's used to seeing players run at him behind that tight end's block there, and he does an awfully good job. That was Coach Tuberville calling the defensive signals right there. Excellent defensive football coach. He really did a nice job of explaining to me yesterday, Brent, his concepts in defensing West Virginia's offense today. I was really uh, enjoyed the conversation. That talented Miami front. Third and ten for the Mountaineers. Kelsner fires. First down. A penalty flag is down. Eddie Hill, the receiver at the ten-yard line, but a penalty flag is thrown at the 18. Hill indicating that it's going against the Canes. His defense has been under pressure, hasn't it? We have a face mask, a five-yard inadvertent face mask against the defense before the pass was complete. So the play, the penalty decline, the play stands, first down. First and ten for the Mountaineers. Still trying to get into the end zone using the fullback, Jimmy Freeman. This is the fourth time West Virginia has had a golden scoring opportunity in the opening quarter, and they have 
zero on well, the scoreboard. You have to give credit to, to Miami defense, Brent. They came in here giving up only 11.6 points a game, and this, they're demonstrating why they've been able to do that right here. I mean, the off they've had terrible field position this whole first quarter, and they have done an excellent job of playing defense. Second down and ten. Telsner, the walker, and walker is slammed at the nine-yard line. It's going to be third down for West Virginia. And again, it was Robert Bass in there with Corwin Francis, 58. Francis all over the field defensively along with that man, number 49. Obviously a little bit worried about their, about their passing game down in there, a little bit concerned about the turnover factor in that. The other thing is with the field goal situation as it is, not really great field goal kickers. They've got to make sure they don't take a sack on this third down if they don't or can't get the completion. 38 to 6. The fake Kelsen to throw it. It does to his tight end, Nate Ryan, number 87 at the five-yard line. They still need almost four yards for a first down. Here comes the fourth down decision. They have missed on two field goals. They'll try another one. They'll go back now and try for the third time to get something on that board with Tom Mazzone, the junior, who kicks the short ones. Well, he was, he's over one for that distance. In fact, they haven't made a field goal inside the 30 this year. has taken a more conservative approach inside that red zone area. Sauerbrunn kicking off. Out of bounds, coming out the 35-yard line. Bennett back in at running back. Bennett to the left side. Bennett is stuffed. Derek Wiley, 45. Good defensive line play prior to Derek Wiley making that play. Again, defensive lineman forcing the running back to move parallel to the line of scrimmage, and Wiley coming up and doing what he's supposed to do. A six foot, 11 and a half inch high jumper. That's an athlete playing outside linebacker. Second down. No running backs. Collins, you can see how he avoids the first man, and he's sacked at the 17-yard line. Scott Gaskins. The mobility didn't help him that. The mobility didn't help him that time. Scott Gaskins had leverage on the ball. He's outside in a three-point stance. You see him coming off the ball right now. You see number 67 in the middle of the screen. Wiley flushes him, gets him outside. Now he's coming off to the right side of your screen. You'll see him appear. Here he comes, and he makes a lunge and gets him by the foot. And a 14-yard loss. Here for the Hurricanes, it's third and 26, trailing by a field goal. Well, they're great at converting third down situations, Brent, but they're better off not taking any chances here. They've already turned the ball over twice. Bennett's the running back. Collins in the shotgun. Three-man rush for the Mountaineers. Middle screen. Bennett. Bennett. Slammed out at the 31, David Mayfield. Excellent call. No, you don't make the first down, but it's not a dangerous throw, and as if you put the ball in the gifted back's hands, a block downfield or two, maybe you do get it. Good offensive call. Mike Chrissy will punt, and last time from the Miami end zone, he took too many snaps, Dick. 
And he took one step, he took one step toward the line of scrimmage on the snap. Mike Baker set to return. This time a better punt to the 27 yard line. Baker trying to cut back away from trouble. Ball is fumbled. Miami still going after it and West Virginia. The scramble is on. And West Virginia hangs on. Zaborowski, the defensive back, number 35, apparently is at the bottom of that pile down inside the five-yard line. Well, Baker has a lot of experience returning punts, Brent. He's returned 37 of them this year, 65 in his career. But it's stupid to get the ball out there like one hand. Uh, that's uh, that's not using good judgment at all. Look at that right there. That, she should fumble the football doing something stupid like that. And that he did. Also trying to twist away there at the end. And then the chase is on. A little of a William Tell overture, please, gentlemen. Normally, you try to scoop it and pull the ball to your belly and cradle that thing. Darren Stutzdale. So he can run. Checks in at quarterback, giving them a little more mobility. His first series. Walker sprinting to the left. Walker showing his first flash to the 20 yard line. Whenever you can run off tackle to the weak side of your formation like that, your offensive tackle, that would be Rick Graham, 78, had to do a real good job. He's at the left position right here at the top of your screen. He had to do a good job. Oh, they ran a stunt, and they picked up the stunt properly. Good coaching by the offensive line. They picked up that slant. A 17-yard gain, his best. And our cameraman will go anywhere for the best in visuals. First and ten for the Mountaineers, leading by a field goal here in the second quarter. Walker slashes back to the inside. Well, Darren Studd still enters the game, and Robert Walker comes to life. Now, they haven't changed the defense, but they do have to alert their outside linebackers that he is their option quarterback. Now, that might be loosening up the front a little bit. You look at this uh, first quarter stats. Miami, minus 23, minus 18 total yards, but turnovers. West Virginia, plus two right there and only three points ahead. That could spell trouble at the end of this one. Second and short, Woodard who checked in at fullback. Bolts ahead to the 34. Kevin Patrick and Darren Klein squeeze down. Yeah, you got it right, big man. First down. Fourth quarter now, and Boston College trying to hang on in South Bend. Who's going to wind up a what bowl game? It's interesting, isn't it? And the fullback, Woodard, for the first down. Very, very clever play, Brent. They used an influence block by the left guard, got four and sap way upfield, and just ran right where he was. You can probably get some odds. First and ten. Walker can't get it turned as Rohan Marley cut him down. That time Marley came up underneath the defensive end rather than going outside. So they had the defensive end in contained position and the linebacker fill up inside. He's not very big, but boy, is he active. And he's an excellent tackler. Second and 12. Boston College's performance in South Bend is really enhancing the Big East today, isn't it? Movement. The defensive lineman got back. Play fakes. That's still going to throw it over the middle. Almost intercepted by Robert Bass. Robert Bass. Had a chance for an interception. Play action. Throws the linebacker, but then he had the mobility to react. Now watch the right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see... 48 see him right there he acknowledges play action he comes on now he watch him drip right back into it good leaper should have picked off his first interception in his career didn't do it he may have his college degree but he'd rather have that interception <laughs> that was for all you educators out there that last line <laughs> speak for yourself <clears throat> i'll get us off the hook third and 12. 
Stutzville on the roll. Stutzville throwing downfield. Oh, and interference. Interference. He was tackled by C.J. Richardson, who had lost contact with the football and tackled the wide receiver. The receiver got deep and tried to come back through the football, and then Baker hooked him and wouldn't let him come back. Not Baker, rather. Richards hooked him and wouldn't let him come back. Lower left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see it up here. Right down to bottom. See 19? Now see him hook him right there with his left arm, wouldn't let him come back for the ball. They're going to call it. A 15-yard penalty in college football. The difference in the NCAA and the NFL rules. That's interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. See, that defender has to give the receiver the opportunity to catch the football. See, he's preventing him from coming back for the football. He probably wouldn't have been able to get back there anyway. As we saw there, he was slipping on the AstroTurf. So with the 15 yards, you can see where the ball is. Miami Hurricane Territory at the 47. First down, West Virginia. On the delay, it's Walker. To the 41-yard line on first down, and Marley hitting first. You can see what they're doing with the good pass rushers like Kevin Patrick. On first down, yes, not third and long. They run a draw, they invite him upfield, and then they get underneath him with the handoff. That really slows you down on first down from there here on out. You'll see it right over here. They invite him upfield with a pass block, but they run the ball underneath him. See, now see him get him upfield like that? Good job there. See, now, great big hole. Hill comes in motion. Studstill's going to throw it. Incomplete. And wow, the Canes were there again. Dexter Siegler, 34. The coverage had rolled up. Dexter Siegler had the outside quarter short, Brent. If he'd have been watching the ball rather than the receiver, I think he would have moved right into position to pick it off and take it in for a score. He was concentrating on the receiver coming out rather than the ball. Third and nine. Dick, what's your impression of the Mountaineer offense so far? Well, I think they've done a real good job, but they've done a lousy job when they've had... Uh, the good field position, but, but they have dominated the game from an offensive standpoint. You know, Miami hasn't done anything, anything with it. At least West Virginia has. Stud still has time. Intercepted at the 15-yard line. Terrace Harris picks it off. That was poor judgment on Stud Still's part because they had him short and long. No one underneath the to hold the short uh, defender up, of course, the line of scrimmage, Brent, and he tried to force it in there on a throwback. Concentrate now. You'll see the quarterback on a short sprint action set up. He's going to throw back. Now he's going to try to go deep. Now, right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see they had him short and long. So two guys on him. Poor judgment by Studstill. The little huller gully here in Morgantown. That won't go over real good up here in West Virginia, believe me. I think Dennis Erickson's really disappointed in his offense right now, too. Yes, you're going to give some credit to West Virginia, but uh, they have not played well. They've been out of sync, right? Well, the penalty brings the ball back inside the 15-yard line. Time remaining. Bennett with Hawkins there defending. They have three timeouts, but obviously they're just going to go ahead and let the clock run out. The first half comes to an end in Morgantown. The unbeaten, untied Mountaineers leading by a field goal, and John Saunders will have all the news and highlights from around the country. What a day this has been so far. We're back in Morgantown for the second half. Dick Vermeil, we haven't had much offensive fireworks. <laughs> we have to give the credit to the defense, but neither offense has been any good, and especially Miami. I'm really surprised at them. You know, that real good passing attack and everything, they haven't done it today. Well, we'll see what happens here in the second half. The Mountaineers of West Virginia, unbeaten and untied, and leading by 
a field goal, and there, Dick, you can see the stats from the first you half. You see, West Virginia has totally dominated the game in time and possession, but they still have only put three points on the board. Total offense for Miami, 60 yards. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, let's update you on what happened in both locker rooms. The emotional content in the West Virginia Mountaineers, they were very, very high, but it's a contained. I checked with Coach Don Nayland as he came out. He said, our pass protection is breaking down. We're going to work on that and make some changes. Over in the Miami Hurricanes locker room, I asked Dennis Erickson what he was going to try and do. He says, it's absolutely imperative that we establish the running game in the second half. I also asked him, should we expect to see Costa relieve Collins? He said, not right now, but maybe in the fourth quarter if things don't turn around. Miami set to receive the kickoff deck. You know, Don Nalen told both you and I, if we could keep this game even going into that second half, we're going to beat those people. That's what he said. He felt very confident that if they could play them even or, or be ahead even coming in that second half, that would give great confidence to his football team. And he felt strongly about it, Brent. And Sauerbrunn, their fine punter, also handles the kickoffs. Here's the kickoff to start the second half into the end zone. And we get shocking word from South Bend. After watching that Notre Dame had gone ahead on fourth and goal, Boston College has kicked a last second field goal. They have upended Notre Dame. There might be, it's final now. Boston College has thrown the whole world of college football up in the air. And now when these fans hear that in Morgantown, they have just received the announcement, how high can the Mountaineers climb? And what about the Hurricanes? Boston College stuns Notre Dame, 41 to 39. Wow, Ryan Collins, the quarterback. Collins slam at the 25-yard line. I'm not sure Ryan Collins wants to throw the ball, Brent. He got back there. I saw the pattern develop. It was a zone pattern against his zone coverage. The receiver was there. He tucked it under his arm and ran. He's not reading the coverage properly. Now second down. Changing the play, and that's going to be tough here in Morgantown the rest of the way now. Collins keeping it, no one to pitch to. Slammed at the 24-yard line, and that was Derek Wiley getting another rip on him. Brent, what he did is he audible to an option to his left. The running back did not hear the audible, and he took off and went to the right. A look at the AP top 10, Notre Dame lost Florida State going later Nebraska idle Miami losing here who will jump to number one third and five he almost pitched that ball out in space there was nobody there no backs everybody out and he hits the running back who had gone out as a wide receiver hits Bennett First down, Canes. See, that type of a pattern is very, very defined. And a young quarterback can recognize what's happening with that. He zeroes in on the one guy. It's a zone pattern. He goes out, comes back underneath, and pops it to him. First half possessions for the Hurricanes. Look at three plays, two plays, two plays, three plays. One drive of five plays. Not very impressive. Notre Dame has lost. So here, West Virginia beating Miami by a field goal. Collins with time. And complete to Harris. Hit right away by number 45. Wiley coming up, deliver the whack. And David Mayfield there defensively, number 30. He's had a big day for the Mountaineers, hasn't he? Yes, he has. He's done an excellent job. Right? He's also the top student on the football team. Very bright young guy. He was a great high school running back. Ran for over 3,000 yards. And right now he calls all the defensive signals. He's, he's taking the signal from the sideline coach there. Second and seven. It's 3-0 West Virginia. Fires complete to the 40-yard line. 
And that's Chris T. Jones in a first down. Well, Jack Arut, you've got a very interested observer with you here today. Well, Brent, indeed I do. Chuck Ninas from the CFA, and what a great weekend. The upset by Notre Dame this game. Well, college football's a great sport, Jack, and that's one of the great things about it. You don't know who's going to win every week. Well, let's talk about the playoffs. You know, everybody that's been reported in the papers a lot about that there should be a playoff one versus two. We'll ask you that question right after this play, Brent. All right, Jack, everybody wants to hear that. Chuck Ninas being involved with the CFA, the head of that fine organization. Here's the handoff now to Stewart. That's Mayfield bringing him down. Okay, Jack. All kinds of reports. Now, what is the truth? Uh, our membership has asked our television committee to evaluate the future of postseason football including the possibility of some championship system. Our committee is in the process of doing it. As many people know, we met with some of the bowls last week. And what we're going is in a very logical manner to see what we should be doing. We'll re have a report for our membership no later than June. Brent, that about sets the record straight. Second down now for the Hurricanes. They have driven down to the West Virginia 30. Donnell Bennett trying to pick his daylight. Mayfield comes up again. And there's a penalty flag. It was thrown late. I think you saw it perhaps on your set. How about Auburn being ranked number one in the writer's poll? Could that happen? And Wisconsin needs a win against Illinois and then in Tokyo against Michigan State to earn its way to Pasadena in the Rose Bowl against the winner of this game with UCLA leading USC 17 to 7. It will be a first down and the Hurricanes have penetrated to the 23 yard line. They change the look at the line of scrimmage and Collins is forced to alter the play again. See they get up there and they cover the center and both guards. It's tough to run inside. They're coming after him. If he can get this off they'll have one on one coverage. Collins out of the end zone. Tommy Orr covering Wimberley. Marcus Wimberley, number 88, a junior. You see what I was talking about here? They covered everybody inside. He knew he'd see all these people right here covering the inside of all the offensive line when there's no one to run. He sees the one-on-one -on -one coverage. He makes the audible. They come with a blitz. He has one-on-one -on -one up to the top of your screen. He tries to get it to him. Second down and 10 for Miami. And you can see that the noise here in Morgantown is playing havoc with the Canes offense. Under pressure, he'll take off. Tafoni can't catch him. And now he's hit by Tommy Orr and knocked out of bounds on that far sideline. See, there is a time when he uses his mobility at an advantage. See, Brent, he's going upfield with the football, not running from sideline to sideline. If you're mobile as a quarterback, get upfield with that. This is like a quarterback draw. See, he's back there in the shotgun. He wants to throw left. He looks there. He doesn't see it. He's flushed right now. See, now he starts to go. He starts to go. Now he sees that hole, and he takes it. He's better off doing that than trying to throw the ball running right or left. He better tuck the ball away, too. <laughs> and Dickett leaves him with second and very short right now. Bennett bolts for the first down. You know, I was talking to Rich Olson, the quarterback coach for Miami, and he told me that they had planned to use four wide receivers in this ball game and take a tight end out as a changeup, and they haven't done that yet today. Now, after that first down, Stewart enters the game. He's the right guy to give the ball to down that close, Brent. Gonna get it. Stewart. Still battling to about the four or three yard line and offensive right side of the line Terrell Green and Zeb Lemelski and those people came off the ball good surge you'll see him right here come off and do a good job of turning people out they uh, they check it now watch this big hole in there now freeze it right there see that no blue jerseys around to make the play Dick we've got to see if he didn't fumble this ball out of bounds let this replay continue here. 
There was activity on that far side. There it goes. There it goes. Out of bounds. Yeah. Good pickup, coach. Fourteen plays. That's nine more than the best drive they had in the first half. Bennett slams for the first and goal. Scott Gaskins, the defensive lineman, making the stop for the Mountaineers. The entire defensive line group of West Virginia have done a real good job. Scott Gaskins, Barry Hawkins, and, and Steve Perkins, those guys have all done a real good job of attacking these people. Well, Dick, the Canes are down here. Four downs to score right now. The defensive signal being sent in for the Mountaineers. Harris is number 40, leading the way. Donnell Bennett blasts to the end zone for the Hurricanes. The game's first touchdown is scored by Donnell Bennett behind Derek Harris. See, they line up in a strong formation left, getting the defense to lean to their right. Then they put the strong back in motion and run over behind him, trying to find a little weakness. They found the crack they needed for the score. Dane Pruitt on to kick the extra point for Miami. Miami's lead increases by one. Both had bad years, didn't they? On the ground. And it's picked up by one of the short men. They did not want to give the ball to one of those talented freshmen back at the goal line, and instead it's one of the Washington. First and ten. Ryan in motion. Walker. Walker. To the 44. Walker, very talented, pounds to the middle of that defense and punches, brings him down. See, the one thing you do with your offense, if you get defensive linemen that are really coming after you, Brent, you draw block them, you trap them, you get them up the field, give the ball back to a running back deep, and let him pick a place to run. Eight-yard gain, and that's exactly what they did. On second down, Woodard. Woodard for the first down. Well, Jack Arute had an opportunity to talk to Jake Kelchner about the hamstring injury that he's playing with. Here's what he had to say. I've caught myself being a little timid on it. I think it's 100%, but you're still a little timid to run full speed on it yet. But uh, it feels good. It really does. Uh, I don't think, I mean, once the game starts, I get warmed up. I think it'll all, you know, disappear in general and take over. Playing on it right now, I think. And again, it is that short man. They have been using that fullback very well. Rodney Woodard deck. Well, Tom Robsek, the offensive left guard, and Dale Williams, the center, and Jim LeBlanc, the right guard, are doing a good job right now of taking people on, and the running backs picking that little spot up inside and bounding right up in the middle. Good offensive line surges. West Virginia pounds inside the Hurricane 25. Answering that long scoring drive by Miami with a drive of their own. See, they moved the defense over to an odd defense now. A little tougher to run inside. Walker out. again. Walker to the left with a great speed. Walker maintains his balance. And another West Virginia first down. Paul White makes the tackle inside the 15. West Virginia's been running the ball inside, so they move to an odd defense, putting a man on the center's nose. So he starts in here, and then he gets outside. See, they crowd up inside there. They stun it up in there. Now he goes outside. Good block there by Ryan. Good power by Walker. Also, Eddie Hill, the wide receiver, came back and sealed off the defender and gave Walker a little bit of a crease. When you've got a running back like Walker, if you're wide receivers, will help downfield. 
Oh, makes him that much more dangerous. The middle of the Kane defense was ready. Juan Russell was there. Robert Walker running strong. Fullbacks running strong. They're blocking. Got a little blood on his arm there. You know, they can make you go out of the ball game now if, if that they determine that being excessive. You can see at his right elbow there. Much like the rule they used in college basketball in the NCAA. Same type of thing, Brent. You know, they weren't successful inside this red zone in the first half. They've got to come up with something here. Could be a passing situation here for Kelsner. It is in trouble again. But he stumbles away, maintains his balance, and Jake Kelsner runs for it to the one-yard line. Holy cow, a first down. I tell you, is he ever a competitor? He is hurting. He is hurting. We saw him hurt that hamstring. And right now, the adrenaline is making him run. That leg is hurting him. But he doesn't care. He smells the end zone. Look at him. There's no question he's bothered on that. Starts play action there. Now see good pass rush by Patrick right there. 86. He gets up underneath him. Now here, he's going to try to get downfield. Lopez can't make the play. See, he's almost hobbling right there. Tucks the ball under right there in his arm. He's going for that end zone. What a competitor. First and goal for Kelsner and the Mountaineers. Walker is stuffed short. It's second and goal. Courageous play. These kids up here at West Virginia, I sensed it being in the locker room around here for the last couple days. When you talk with these kids, they're uh, a tough group and controlled intensity. Uh, they love playing football. They love going to school here. And they were really looking forward to the challenge of playing the team the caliber of Miami. Here, second and goal. And the defense again, equal to the task. They stop Walker. Did he put it down? Miami is signaling that there's a fumble. But the official, I believe, is going to say, no, we whistled it down. It'll be third down. Warren Sapp. What a great defensive lineman oh, he is. He, he has tremendous quickness. As soon as you talk to their defensive coaches about him, they start talking about the comparison to the past great defensive line. There's 76, right-hand corner of your screen. He gets down. He's going to put that other hand down. And here he comes, that inside gap. You don't want to allow inside penetration. And he gets it anyway. See? You can't allow inside penetration in the goal line. Dick, and watching the tapes, the West Virginia games, and even here, Walker is awfully effective to the left side when he gets to that corner. Let's see what they come up with here. Third and goal. Kelsey's in trouble. Going to throw. Touchdown! The fullback, Woodard. See, play action. He gets pressure from the backside. Now you'll see him here. They're bringing the blitzes back there. Here comes people calling Francis there. And he lays it out there anyway. Both people wide open. Good offensive call there by Mike Jacobs. Here's a this is a team here in West Virginia that is not short of character. Oh, no way. Sauerbrunn. It's going to be downed in the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. The shocker. Boston College has thrown the poles up. And, and let's remember that they have a big meeting next week with West Virginia. That now is going to be no small-time football game. Donnell Bennett. Collins on first down on the move wants to throw this one away and instead it's complete 
He hit Clausel on the move. He picked him up when he got over to the right sideline. Excellent penetration by Scott Gatskin. The defensive tackle forced him out of the pocket. He didn't have much choice. He couldn't run like a quarterback draw on that one. He had to get outside. Now, you see, they changed to a 30 defense. Three down linemen. He makes the fake. Here comes Gaskins to the left side of your screen. See, now he gets out there, and he's flushed. At this time, he makes a good play and almost a great play. A 22-yard gain, Dick. First and 10. Changing it up. Stewart's the running back. See, they're back to a four-man defensive line now, not the three-man front. The offensive line doing a fine job. Really held up, and he hits Harris. Ryan Collins pass. A first down, and Jack Aru, what about Jonathan Rohan Murray on that last drive? Well, some bad news, maybe, and I repeat, maybe. Behind me, you see Dr. John Uribe and the training staff of the Miami Hurricanes working on Rohan Marley. What he has done is he has taken a severe shot to the front of his thigh. It has created a bruising situation, and they can't get the cramping out. With the cold weather, it's very difficult. As you know, if you take a hard shot, you don't recover from it real quickly. All right, Jack, we'll keep an eye on that. And here it is, first and 10. The ball at the Mountaineers, 45. And the Canes mount a second drive. Bennett, nowhere. Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, is really doing a nice job of mixing up his defenses. He hasn't given them the same look on first down and I think of the last 10 first down situations. And it's causing some hesitation of the quarterback. I actually think he wanted an audible that time and recognized he didn't have enough time. Here's Steve Dunlap right there. He's calling the signal. Seconds ticking away here in the third quarter. third quarter unbeaten West Virginia leading once beaten Miami by a field goal second and nine for Miami start the fourth quarter the Canes trailing by a field goal and Stewart into the game as the running back Collins is going to throw the screen is to Stewart and a great hit by Richardson he had to get there. Everybody else was backed off. The offensive line were forming the screen nicely, and Richardson coming from the inside out made the play. And I, I talked to him the other day about playing against Miami, and he said he hates to play against a one-back attack. Two backs are easier for him because he says one back always takes me to the ball, and the other one carries it. But when there's only one back, I have a tendency to overrun the play. That one he did not overrun. Third and seven. Collins. Now forced to scamper. Richardson chasing him. Richardson forces him back. Collins again eludes a defender. Throws across field. Complete. Tellison. You talk about Sandlot football. Holy mackerel. See, the other thing, when you've got a guy like that in the backfield and you're chasing him, as a defender, you've got to think about my, your base, your feet, come to balance. Don't let him get around you. If you have him close to you, come to balance. This guy, unbelievable. Good pass rush, good pressure up inside. You'll see now Wiley, 41, up the middle of your screen. He flushes him. He, too, is a very good athlete. But watch this now. Come in, he re reverses field, and right there, 97, Steve Perkins doesn't keep him contained, and here's a big play. He stepped out of bounds where he would have scored a touchdown. A 42-yard gain, first and goal. Tellison has caught seven passes of 30 or more yards this season. Talk about a huge play. Changed the entire tempo of this football game. Crowd was stunned. Bennett cuts back, battling for the end zone, and he has kept out. Tim Brown was there, along with Aaron Beasley. Tim did everything he could there. He was hoping to get more help because Bennett is a load when he gets that close to the goal line. I think they're congratulating each other right there. A good back and a good linebacker coming to a standstill. But those kind of plays as a coach, Brent, absolutely drive you crazy. 
here you're talking about strength and strength. Now look at two good strong feet, and he did get some help. I gave him all the credit. He got some nice help there that time from Beasley, number 32. Second and goal. They're trying to diagram that scramble play again, I think. Stewart. Stewart is short. Third and goal. These kids have tremendous character. Well, I, you know, this situation, you tell Collins, just move out of there and start scrambling and make it happen. You just give me a touchdown any way you can. Let's just draw it up on the, on yeah. the carpet here. Alexander in the middle of that defensive surge for the Mountaineers. What an amazing play that was. 42 yards. Collins to Tellison. Now Larry Jones enters as a running back along with Harris, Derek Harris, and Donnell Bennett. So three running backs in a game, and uh, Collins trying to get them all in the right position here on third and goal. The toss is to Bennett. Touchdown, Miami. Well, they went in the right direction. They've had trouble getting lined up, but once they got lined up, they got it done. You see, they had a running back blocking Tommy Orr, an outside corner there and he never got there to contain the play you'll see the back set right here now this is a defensive back right here a little guy just a corner 24 Tommy Orr, and the running back gets on him right there see and he should not be that tight he should be at a deeper angle going upfield to contain that play the extra point and these were the numbers after three quarters you can see that Miami has really picked it up in that third quarter each team having a scoring drive in the third quarter they balanced out the stats uh, in total offense running game now pass yards rather and really in favor of Miami but uh, much of it on that one broken play Dick they've had to switch kickoff men for the Hurricanes remember Scott Barnwell injured a shoulder in the first half Dane Pruitt number 21 He's their, he's their normal field goal kicker. Well, let's see if they kick short again. And keep it out of the hands of Logan and Vanterpool, who have moved up. If he's going to kick it short again. The flags on the goalpost down here are blowing into his face, so the wind has turned around a little bit, Brent. He's kicking into it again. Yeah, on the ground, off. and it is fielded at the 35-yard line by Purnell. And Purnell is out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Decline. Walker on a cutback. And a penalty flag comes late as C.J. Richardson brings him down. Tom Tuberville, the defensive coordinator for Miami, now he's playing his game. He changed the defensive totally that time, moved all the defensive linemen one way and the linebackers the other way. Tom, that was a nice call. And what, you know what happened? They ended up running right into the strength of the defense. Look at that smile. He likes what you said about him, Coach. <laughs> He's a good coach. Nice. Good coach. And there's going to be a face mask penalty here. And that's going to move the ball across midfield. So the five-yard face mask penalty. Puts the ball at the 49-yard line. Jake Kelchner. Second and one. Using Woodard. Woodard blasting for the first down to the Miami 31. What an interesting and strange football game. The first half was all defense and failed opportunities. In the second half, we get one long drive after another. Now the offensive linemen are taking charge. You know, and they were so successful with that one drive running the football that they might as well just stay with that kind of running. Just let your offensive lineman come off the ball. The Canes up by four. West Virginia with Kelchner handing off to Woodard, the fullback, and Robert Bass, the middle linebacker, hitting first. Again, they come with a 2-D, two outside linebackers blitzing Brent. They'd be wise, I think, to change up on first down and throw some kind of an action pass that they get rid of quickly because they end up with man-to-man -man coverage. Marley, they were bringing on the blitzes on first down. Of course, he's out there. This time, they brought Burgess and Carwin Francis. After Baker's fine punt return, the Mountaineers inside the Canes' 30-yard line here on second down. 
Kelsner is going to throw it. He's in trouble, steps away. And a foot race for that hamstring, and he has no chance with Riley. Pat Riley bringing him down. A huge defensive play. Pat Riley is a backup. He was a starter last year. He missed spring practice with a shoulder surgery. He's been coming on. I noticed him in the last two games on tape that he is really playing well. I asked the coaches about him, and they said definitely coming on strong. Holding. Huge call against Miami. It happened downfield. And it looked like it happened totally away from the play, Brent. And it was away from the play, and it was just out of our range where the action was. Remember, that was an 11-yard loss on the sack. That nullifies it with that holding penalty downfield. This could be the biggest play of this game, and Stud still had the helmet on, but Jake Kelchner is still on the field. There is Stud still attempting to stay warm there on the sideline, close to Coach Nealon. Kelsner and the Mountaineers with a first and ten. The ball is at the Miami 19-yard line now. Mountaineers down by four. Here's Walker. Walker left side. Walker. Tell Walker a score. Mountaineers lead. Virginia ahead again. We'll be back for the final six minutes. Well, here's the play, Dick Vermeil, that put West Virginia ahead. Well, Braham, the big offensive tackle, does a nice job on a turnout block. Then Rob Sock gets his block. Then Woodward comes through and seals off the linebacker. You'll see the linebackers are plus to the strong side there, so it's a little bit easier to play for him. He takes on Burgess right there. Remember, Martley is out of the ball game, so the backup is playing in that spot, and they took advantage of it. Dick, there was an excellent punt return with 28 yards, and then that holding penalty against Miami, and that set it up for Walker, who has now carried 25 times for 95 yards, and his first touchdown. West Virginia is up by a field goal. 6.08 to go here in Morgantown. At the goal line, it's Siegler. 20 to the 26-yard line. And here, the unbeaten Mountain Men. They love this football team. Bennett being stretched out. Nowhere as Tim Brown does it again. The defensive lineman and Brown and Derek Wiley getting good penetration. See now, here Wiley right here gets good penetration and pushes it back, and he can't get turned up. He has to go to the sideline. See now, watch he gets up underneath there. Now see he's forcing it inside out. There now Brown's right there to make the play. Good defense. On a six-yard loss, it's second and 16. Extra defensive back inserted. The Mountaineer defensive backfield. Collins. Collins dancing out of the pocket again. Stumbles and down at the 25. Mike Collins tripped him up. That is a big, big play. I think they would be wise from a defensive standpoint, Brent, to take their defensive tackles, tell them to bull rush, control, and look for the quarterback scramble inside and make the ends take the same type of charge and in a contained position because this guy can beat you on that one broken play. Let's remember that Miami has used up two of their three timeouts right. already. A big factor right now. Larry Jones, third and ten. Jones checks into the backfield. They're moving over to the quarterback's left. 
Stutter stepping in motion. And Collins fires incomplete. Intended for Chris T. Jones. Wes Richardson was the defender. Threw it too hard and threw it behind him. Now an important moment as Miami is forced to punt. That could set up Baker again for another return. We're inside of four and a half minutes. The Mountaineers with an opportunity to go to work on that clock. Remember, Miami has only one timeout remaining in this football game. The number one thing Baker has to do is field it cleanly and don't be careless with the football. Fair catch. That's how cleanly he'll come up with this one That's at right. the 35-yard line. And he's saying, hey, that man's got to give me a couple of yards. He came too close to me. No flag. We'll be back for the final 420. Last 420 here, lads. We focus in on an unbeaten, untied West Virginia team trying to climb up and impress folks. A lot of voters here watching today. Big media turnout here in Morgantown. First and ten, but this will be dangerous against this Miami defense. They're coming again, and Woodard is stuffed right there. Sap all over him. See, they might get along. They might as well line up there and come after him, Brent. And, and see, they fill up those gaps with the linebackers. You try to make the cutback, and there the linebacker is to fill the play. They're they're going to get the ball back quickly if they don't throw the ball well here. What would you do here in this situation offensively? Well, I'm sitting up here, you know. So I'd say on the first down, I anticipate blitz. I throw the quick out or quick slant. It scare them to death. Somebody wins a Rudy. I expect to be able to tell me. Oh. Well, congratulations, Coach. Nice going. That's a big honor. I'm sure he'll send you a big gift. He's one of the big spenders. <laughs> Second and 11. The fake to Walker. Kelchner buys time. The middle double cover. The diving reception against the double coverage. They hit Kearney. Well, I, to me, it looked like it was going to be an interception, but again, it was one of those balls that was underthrown. The defensive people trying to get in position to make the interception, they couldn't get back to the ball. Play action pass to the right. They're going to fake it here, just fake the walker. He's been carrying the ball. The safety's working deep middle, didn't fool them. Jay Kearney coming from the right side of your screen, number 18, trying to get down the seam. He lays it up, hoping Kearney, with the good speed, can go under it. He... It's underthrown, and he goes and takes it right off the turf. Nice job by Jay Kearney. A magnificent play, a big play. And his first catch of the day for 41 yards may have been the biggest play of the season for the Mountaineers. First down inside, Miami's 35. They're bringing the end around. This is Vanderpool, the freshman, and Vanderpool, a first down again. That was an excellent call because they knew the outside linebackers would be blitzing. So they're coming down flat, Brent, to stop those inside runs, and they hand off the reverse play. You'll see what I mean. See, here's the backer. Here he's going to come. This backer's going to come. But instead of going inside, they hand off and run the reverse. See, that pulls the linebacker down. There's Clark Francis. He doesn't see the handoff. And there goes Rasan Vanderpool on a long run. Dick, that's the best play call of the game. That's came a at the very right good time. call. That was See, wonderful. And they were concerned about throwing the quick out or the quick slant because they knew they were going to get the blitz, and they knew these linebackers were coming down to collapse that inside play from the outside in. Excellent football play and an excellent call by Mike Jacobs. Now Miami faces a clock situation, 2.48 to go. This is Woodard. Woodard off the right side, and he slams inside the 15-yard line. Woodard is not the starter. Jay Freeman is out of the ball game with not hurt seriously, but he is banged up. The top ranked team has lost already. Yeah. The fourth ranked team is under fire. West Virginia unbeaten and gaining respect with each tick of the clock. Auburn still alive in one poll. What an interesting ending to this college football season. Oh, no question. And we're really lucky, Brent, because Friday we get to see the number one team in the country. Bring along your long years. Nebraska. Tom Osborne They're says undefeated. it's going to be 10 degrees out there, partner. <laughs> yeah. I think West Virginia will probably jump as high as two, three, or four. I mean, it's going to be they interesting to see what happens. Uh, the eyes of the voters. This is second and five. Of course, first things first, they got to hang on here. This is Walker. Stepping into the middle of that defense. Boy, has this guy done a great job here. Been here this 14th season. He's taken him to seven bowl games. And, you know, there's probably more people in the 
mile vicinity around Miami than there are in the whole state right here. So you know my feeling about six years ago, Ohio State should have come knocking on the door here in West Virginia. You know how I feel about that because he came out of the Ohio high school situation. Yes, he did. He knows how to recruit and he's not the glamour school down here. He sometimes has to pick up the guys, the rejects from the Notre Dames and the Miamis and schools like that. Does a wonderful job, popular with other coaches. Leading by three, Walker to the nine-yard line. Nice tackle by Terrace Harris. Boy, that was an excellent free safety play. Folks, this is going to be one of the great celebrations in college football here in Morgantown tonight. Two tight ends. You can see how short they are. That's Doc Holliday, the wide receiver coach, giving instructions right there. An appropriate name for a receiver coach in West Virginia, isn't it? Doc Holliday. The scene is Morgantown, West Virginia, their largest crowd ever. Unbeaten and untied. And playing the fourth rank and highly rated Miami Hurricanes. Leading by three with a minute to go now. Jake Keltzner, pulled hamstring and all, is just going to kneel it down here and take time off that clock. So Miami doesn't have any timeouts left, so they can just go ahead and just flop on. Coach Nealon knows it. For Erickson and the Hurricanes, their second loss of the season. And now this West Virginia team will start to jump up in the polls. Donnie keeping the sideline clear, knowing the ball has to be at least snapped again. And isn't it ironic that on a day when Notre Dame, ranked number one, is upset that a transfer from Notre Dame quarterbacks West Virginia to its greatest triumph ever, Jake Kelchner. Let that celebration begin. West Virginia has done it. They're storming the fortress, boys. We're going to come back with this scene, but right now, let's quickly check in with John Saunders. John? Out now to Miami, West Virginia, Brent Musburger, Dick Vermeer. John, what a day in college football. Here in Morgantown, West Virginia beating Miami 17 to 14 to stay unbeaten. And they Don Nealon receives the victory bath. <laughs> and it's cold. <laughs> How high will the Mountaineers climb? What a night this is going to be in Morgantown. What a victory. John Saunders, we're going to let you sort it all out. We're going to say adios from Morgantown. It's been some Saturday, partner.